Alright, Shalom, Shalom. It's Brother Yataz, the hero of Israel. We start off by giving all and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Makai Kodash. Give double honors to the elders and apostles, great millstone, taught us the truth. And, um, doing this lesson called the, the, uh, crown of life also goes into the, uh, giving of the law and the inward parts. And I'm going to touch on topics like the law being, uh, not being our justification. So again, this is what this lesson is about. I'm going to start off with second Peter chapter one and 19. And I'm um, going to touch on uh, some of the um, uh, applications of the law and also the, uh, the, the events that will lead up for, for the elect to be crowned by Hamashiach Yahushai and the, uh, how it's all going to play out. Not in depth, but um, like I said, I'm going to touch on various topics. This is First Peter chapter one, Second Peter one and nineteen. Second Peter one and nineteen, and it reads, "We also have a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well, that you take heed. Take heed to what the prophecies, because spirit, as it is written, the spirit of Hamashiach Yahushai is the spirit of prophecy." Now you have uh, here in the revitalized Roman Empire, which is America, Babylon, the Great, you have to have a remnant that will return to keep the law, statutes, and commandments because the law abided forever, as it is written in the uh, book of Second Edris. Now, let me see if I can get that precept because there's other camps that teach that if you do not have your uh, fringes, that you're going to be destroyed. But again, the law, we're not justified by the law. And the fringes in particular, that is just was commanded to remember the, the law, statutes, and commandments. You would look on the fringes and remember to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. So that is not going to be our justification. So again, let me get that precept. In the book of uh, Second Edris, this is the uh, Second Edris, chapter five, chapter three, verse twenty-one. Second Edris three and twenty-one. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed, and was overcome. And so be all they that are born of him. So Adam transgressed, which is why you had the, the, um, which was a, uh, um, sin unto death, which really the most high passed that unto the, the seed starting with Adam, which is Hamashiach Yahushai, the first Adam and uh, Hamashiach Yahushai being the last Adam. Why? Because when he returns, he's going to establish his reign that was promised to him by the Father. Second Edges 3 and 21, For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed, and was overcome, and so be all they that are born of him. So the infirmity being death, being um, travail, that was passed on to all men. And um, because you had the lineage, the, the uh, lineage of the righteous, which ultimately um, went through the generations of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So it says, 2nd Edges 3 and 21, For the first Adam buried in a wicked heart, transgressed, and was overcome. And so all they that be born of him, verse 22, thus infirmity was made permanent. So the infirmities, death, travail, uh, years 
uh, be, be numbered. And as the creature is waxing old and old, the, 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 the years that men live have been uh, diminished, as well as the strength, the vigor. Second Ezra 3 and 22, thus infirmity was made permanent, and the law also, in the heart of the people, with the malignity of the root, so that the good departed away, and the evil abode still. So the law abideth, abides forever. And there was an oral law before it was written on tables of stone, when it was given to the Israelites, and um, after leaving, departing from Egypt. This was done in uh, Mount Horeb. And uh, you had the uh, covenant which was renewed, which was not renewed, but it was, uh, there were stipulations added to it, like the, the oath which the Israelites made. And Moses spoke to the children of Israel. He said, I not only make it with you that are standing here, but those that are not present at this time. So those that weren't, and on the uh, in the living in the living uh, realm, so there was a uh, there was the oath was added, the oath of the curse, and also there was a uh, in uh, in Horeb there was a the sprinkling of the blood, so there was the oath of the curse added to that. You can read that in. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 29. And, um, but anyway, this is second address three and, um, three and 26. And in all things did even as Adam and all his generations had done, for they also had a wicked heart. So again, that is the uh, the um, the infirmity that was handed through all generations, the law being permanent. Now um, let's go back to uh, so the law is important. You also have to have the faith in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, which we're not justified by the law, but again, there's there's a reason why Hamashiach Yahweh Shai came on the scene to be appropriation for sin. Now, this is a stumbling block that the uh, rulers of the Jews did not understand, and it was prophesied for that for that to happen, which is Mashiach Yahushai being appropriation for the people. Now, we'll go over that also, but the point is that we're not justified by the law. The law was just a, a, uh, a to bring in the, a better hope. Because ultimately, like I said, the rulers of the Jews, they were keeping the carnal ordinances of the law, but they denied things like uh, doing judgment, which was in the correct manner, which was uh, they, they were doing the opposite. They were uh, casting away the Israelite foreigners when the law tells you that... Uh, that uh, you're not supposed to suffer sin upon your people. So during that time, there was Jews that were that fell away from their customs and practices. But they, the rulers of the Jews, they were they were uh, they thought that the law just keeping it themselves. They thought that justified them, which is why they didn't believe in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, because they thought the law was end all be all. But let's go back to Second Peter. 1 and 19. Second Peter 1 and 19. We also have a more sure word of prophecy. Where unto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place till the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. So that light starts with what? The, uh, the law, statutes, and commandments. And the prophecies, which is why you read in the book of Revelation about the, the two witnesses, which is ultimately the law and the prophets. 
northern kingdom and southern kingdom these are the uh, the uh, martyrs of Hamashiach Yahushai martyr in the Greek just means a witness and every witness has to have a testimony starting with 144,000 that have the new song which is being sung uh, via the internet via coming out on highways and byways as prophesied by the book of Matthew chapter 22 and verse 9 so 2 Peter 1 and 19 so that light starts with the law statutes and commandments as well as the prophecies and the things written for our understanding read about that in the book of uh, John chapter 17 verse 20 because you had to have uh, Mashiach Yahushai come on the scene you had to have Paul the Apostle to be raised up to write the things the various letters the various epistles for our understanding today as well as John the Revelator have to see certain visions not only so they can line up with the things that the prophet saw but so they can be made manifest in the latter days as it is written so second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19 as unto a light that shineth in the dark place until the day dawn what is the day dawn we're in the spiritual night time right now which is why the apostle paul uh, speaks about uh, those that walk in the night are drunken why because you read about that in book of habakkuk that uh the the uh uh the edomites they they have uh drunken cause all nations to be drunken with their philosophy which is their uh, pseudoscience their uh uh organized religion and um the things you you that are pushed on the uh, so-called black hispanic native americans and pop culture media uh which is which is nothing but uh witchcraft witchcraft is is based on on deceiving uh deceiving one deceiving the people now there's there's a witchcraft that uh is based off of uses of herbs which is what a lot of these eaves are doing today They're caught up in that uh plant plant spirit that gardening spirit which is what the uh uh witchcraft is about it's about using herbs and and all those other things like so-called spells their their power is in the herbs that they use to manipulate uh their their victims but let me get that precept in um Thessalonians this is first Thessalonians chapter five and uh verse We'll start at verse 1. 2 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 1. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. So the Apostle Paul, as well as the uh, head of the church, Peter, he, he spoke uh, about being mindful of the words that the prophet spake. Because they saw these things, although they did not have the uh, full understanding at that time, things that Paul the Apostle envisioned, and um, John the Revelator saw specifically that were revealed to him. But they knew that uh, that there that there was a change that had to come to pass. They they knew certain prophecies spoke about the the uh what was promised through the lineage of abraham isaac and jacob to establish the uh the first dominion of the sons of jacob which is the kingdom which will be given unto the saints first thessalonians 5 and uh we'll go down to uh Verse 5, you are all the children of light and the children of the day. 
Why? Because the children of the day are those that will receive the uh, the upcoming world rulership, which is why you go into Second Edris, Malachi, uh, Malachi one and four, Romans nine and thirteen, Second Edris, I believe that's chapter six, and verse seven and on down. Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And again, you can line all these things up because you read about the, the uh, five wise virgins, five are wise, five are foolish, that represents the nation of Israel as a whole. And um, let's see if I can get that precept. This is book of Matthew, chapter... 25 and verse 1 Then shall the king of my heaven be likened unto ten virgins Which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom Five of them were wise, five of them were foolish So you had the foolish and the and, and you have the wise The wise are going to get the stylish wisdom and understanding Seek the most high God uh, before the days of evil Which the days of evil are coming upon America, Babylon, great as it is written, great sedition, great uh, uh, princes not uh, uh, regarding their governors. Which is why you have, you know, certain of these uh, uh, um, military, they're, they're set up in, in schools to drive buses and, and medical fields. Because, and you have the uh, uh, certain police force, they're, they're, and 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 medical medical personnel they're they're leaving their their post because of the vaccine. Now all these things are created to uh, cause division, which is why you have a uh, uh, a um, a strategy that that uh, called the strategy attention, which is to create uh, psyops, to create social experiments, to uh, pit the people. One, one against another and this is all being done by the wicked elites because you have uh, the elites which are the uh, bankers they 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 one they thrive off of a uh, uh, war they thrive off of a uh, 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 ultimately off of uh, economic uh, collapse why because they have uh, they own the uh, the, the the military. They own the uh, the politicians, so their plan is is to collapse the system, so they can bring in their uh, digital RFID chip. Revelation thirteen to sixteen, but the point is that uh, Matthew twenty five and um, Matthew twenty five and six, and at midnight there was a cry made, "Behold, the bridegroom cometh." Go ye out to meet him. So what happens during midnight? That's uh um we're making that cry right now. We're crying out to the most high God, Yahweh Bashim Yom Shai, Bashim Kakwadash, through supplications, by going out on highways and byways, preaching his word, showing our people the way. And uh and that's that's being done at midnight. Why? Because we're at the last hour. What happens after midnight? There's a transition from night to day, which is why the Apostle Paul spoke about you are children of the light. We are in the, uh, uh, um, the right now, this is the, the dominion, the kingdom of the children of darkness, which is um, the physical embodiment of the spiritual demon Satan uh, the in the flesh, which are the uh, Edomites. Uh, uh, um, and uh, their various uh, 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 swords that they have, because they have a sword, they have a military sword. These devils have been blessed with a uh, uh, a sword. Their the religion is a sword. These are the various swords that they're blessed with to control the people. But again, Matthew twenty five and six. At midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. So we're, 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 we're heralding the coming of Hamashiach Yahushai to the elect. And this is at midnight. 
because we're in the uh, spiritual uh, nighttime right now. After midnight, what happens? The uh, the sun goes up, and the the morning arises, which is the uh, the the rulership of the saints of the Most High God. So now we're in spiritual nighttime, where the daytime would be when the uh, sons of Yashra'ala get their uh, the rain back on the earth. Matthew twenty-five and. Um, Actually, that's it for now, but let's go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 5. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 5, you are all the children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Why? Because the uh, book of Ephesians uh, chapters, chapter 6, get that real quick, speaks about this world being under the... Uh, under the hand of the rulers of, of, of darkness, the wicked of the earth, which is the uh, Edomites and these other nations. Galatians chapter 6 and um, actually Ephesians chapter 6. And 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So we're wrestling against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Now, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 5. You are all children of the light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. But two thirds of our people have choose to remain in spiritual darkness, in obscurity. Why? Because they, they as it was, as it was uh, prophesied about them, they would choose uh, death rather than life. The life starts with the with the uh, the law, statutes, and commandments. Knowing the prophecies that are sure. And, and true, and they will come to pass. So 1 Thessalonians 5 and 6, Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. You're supposed to watch as well as pray. And, and, and um, we're spo you're supposed to seek the, uh, the prophecies, grow in this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. This isn't just about where it infringes. This isn't just about keeping the Sabbath day. This is about faith. You got to have faith as well as works. What are your works? Keeping the commandments to the best of your ability. Come not on the highways and byways for those that can teach. If you're if you're just learning this thing, you're supposed to grow. And you're supposed to edify the people. You're supposed to be making videos. And um, so this is about faith. This is as well as keeping the commandments, praying, and, and watching the uh, the current events. First Thessalonians five and verse seven: For they that sleep sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. So two thirds of our people choose to remain asleep in this spiritual nighttime that we're in. They choose to be drunken with the philosophies of this world. Verse eight. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. So faith as well as uh, love. Love is what? Keeping the commandments. And what do you do when you keep the commandments? You love your neighbor as yourself. Who is your neighbor? The children of your people, as it is written. How do you correct your people? You show them where they're going off. You show them the way. You 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 show them the um the prophecies. Give them knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And for in helmet the hope of salvation. 
Now let's go back to uh, 2 Peter 1 to 19. This is the book of 2 Peter 1 and 19. And um, we also have a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Now, what is the day star? That is the, uh, the laws, the statutes and commandments, the prophecies. Hamashiach Yahushai, things that he spoke of, indeed, that would come to pass in these latter days. Which is ultimately the volume of the book, which is why you got to eat, eat this whole roll. The, the sweet as well as the uh, uh, the bitter. Suffer for righteousness sake. So that others may may um may may get this this uh this this understanding. Seek them so they seek the most high God while he still may be found. So this is uh Revelation chapter two verse twenty five. Revelation two and twenty five but that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. So those that are in this truth, the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, hold fast to what you have. Uh, whether you know little or you know much, you're supposed to hold fast and not be lukewarm. And because uh, ultimately, Yahweh Bashim Yahshua is going to spew you out. Which is if you're if you're if those that are teachers, you gotta you gotta keep make keep doing the sit downs. Going out on the highways and byways. Study. Watch as well as pray. So Revelation 2 and 25. For that which ye have already. Hold fast till I come. So who's going to hold fast to this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding? The elect. Those that know that they are Israelites. Those that know that they have to keep the commandments to the best of their ability. Unlike these other camps. They, they, they relied their... They think that the law is going to justify them. But you got to have faith as well as works. Revelation 2 and 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations. So this is as, has to do with, with keeping Yahweh Bashem Yahshai's works unto the end. And um, to receive that crown of life. What is the crown of life? Spiritual power to be delivered out of America, Babylon the Great before the ISBM missiles hit. There are certain things that the elect will receive that the two thirds, the, the majority will not receive. Neither will they understand why these things are coming to pass. And, and these prophecies are, are coming to a close. But the elect will keep uh, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai's worse until the end. To him will I give power over the nations. Verse 27. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter. Of a potter shall there be broken the shivers. So that's that rod of iron. Uh, you read about them in book Jeremiah. Chapter uh, 51. And uh, verse 20. Yahweh Hashem El Shai. Is going to make our, uh, our hooves brass. And our horns iron. That's talking about being able to. Uh implement the law statutes and commandments throughout the whole earth to put these other nations into uh, uh, subjugation hardcore slavery for a thousand years and, and uh, to set order back on planet earth to rejuvenate the uh, the the the, uh, the earth itself through the 12 trees ladder laden with uh, diverse fruits which is ultimately the earth is going to be Turned into the Garden of Eden all over again. Back to its former uh to its former um glory. Revelation uh two and twenty eight, and I will give him the morning star. The morning star is that is that uh uh the enlightenment, the spiritual power, which starts with, with uh coming into this uh truth. Knowing that you have to keep the commandments, knowing the prophecies, 
as well as keeping uh, having faith and works. Now the scriptures speak about, uh, let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 2, and um, Psalms 2 and 7, I will declare the decree, Yahweh Shem Yahushua said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, ask of me, and I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. And the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. So this earth is ultimately uh, was ordained to be in the in Hamashiach Yahushai's power, which will uh, be set up in the kingdom of heaven with the saints of the Most High God, ruling in thrones. Uh, with Mashiach Yahushai, which is the house of David, which is being built up, uh, and the breaches are being closed as last these, last these prophecies are coming to pass. Now you read about that in, um, let's see if I can get that in the book of Psalms. This is the book of Psalms, chapter, I believe it's the latter chapter in the book of Psalms. This is the uh, book of Psalms, chapter 122, and um, verse 4, we'll start at verse uh, 2, our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem, Psalms 122 and 3, Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together, whither the tribes go up. The tribes of the Lord unto the testimony of Yashar'ala, which are the sons of uh, 12 tribes of Jacob, the, uh, uh, the Israelites, so-called black, Hispanic, Native Americans, to give thanks unto the name of Yahweh, For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. As it is written, we are uh, inheritors with Hamashiach Yahushai. And, um, but let's go back to, uh, this is, uh, Baruch chapter four and verse one. Actually, let me get that, uh, preset. So I can get a preset and, um. This is the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 17. Because we are joint heirs with Hamashiach Yahushai, as it is written, Romans 8 and 17. And if children then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Hamashiach, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. Because ultimately, Hamashiach Yahushai had to go through uh, uh, his own people reviling him. Um, you read about that in the book of Mark, you know, his own kinsman said that he was beside, beside himself, which if you go into Greek, uh, they were calling him insane. They said that he was insane. And um, so Romans 8 and 17, so we're joint heirs with Hamashiach Yahushai. If we suffer with him, why? Because we're suffering for this uh, to, in these latter days, you know, uh, uh, believing in the Holy Bible, believing in the prophecies that uh, are made manifest in these latter days. But as Hamashiach Yahushai suffered, and as, as it is written, the uh, servant is not above his master. So if Hamashiach Yahushai suffered, 
we're also going to be reviled and uh, uh, and mocked, just like Hamashiach Yahushua was, especially by his own people. Scriptures speak about uh, your those of your own household being your foes. Now, um, see if I can get that real quick. in the book of uh, Matthew. Matthew chapter 10, verse 36. Matthew 10 and 36. Start at verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of their own household. You know, their own household are, are your own people. So this is what uh, Mashiach Yahweh spoke about. Those of your own household. So the... Uh, being those of your foes, so the servant is not above his master. And the scriptures speak about being hated for all nations' sake, for Hamashiach Yahweh's sake. Now, um, let's get the uh, precept I was talking about. Mark chapter 3, verse 21. This is the book of Mark 3 and 21. So when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him, for they said, he is beside himself. Now, um, let's see if I can get that real quick. Or actually, you can look it up for yourself, but they were basically, they were calling him insane for the, uh, for, for the things that he was teaching in, the, in his ministry. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 1. Baruch 4 and 1. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. That's two-thirds of the nation of Israel. Why? Because they they are not seeking the most high God in these, especially in these times that we're in. They're not measuring the time diligently. And um they like like it is written, um, Throughout the whole book, uh, these these things are gonna are gonna come as a thief in the night. 
you know, things like the um the RFID chip and 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 um World War Three, you know, these things, Hamashiach Yawashai, uh descending from the third heavens to deliver his elect, to beam up uh the uh the elect of nation of Israel and to destroy the two thirds, all these things are gonna are gonna uh come upon the two thirds unaware. And uh ultimately they're they they're going to take the RFID chip. They're gonna be condemned into the lake of fire. So they'll have to be uh born in the regeneration in the kingdom. Now, but those that that, that uh um uh, that receive this uh knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, that's that's part of the receiving the enlightenment, the morning star. It starts with this word to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Baruch 4 and uh, 2. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take heed of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. So you're being illuminated by coming into this light, which is the uh, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Holy Bible. Coming back to your nationality, keeping the commandments, the, the high holy days. Now these things will not justify you, but... Uh, you're commanded to keep the law. Why? Because that is part of the uh, the, the oath, uh, part of the uh, first covenant. We're in a transition onto the uh, second covenant, which is what? The uh, the crown of life, having the uh, dominion over the other nations. So um, this starts with the light, which is the law. The law is the light. Uh, re reproof and instructions are the way of life, as it is written. Book of uh, Proverbs 6 and 23. Now, um, this is the book of 1 John, chapter 4 and verse 4. 1 John 4 and 4. 1 John, actually, before I get that, 1 John 2 and 3. Hereby we know that we know him. We keep his commandments. He's, he that saith, I know him, and keep it not his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. Uh, so it's about keeping the commandments. This is about um, having faith. This is about committing our works unto the end. Now, it's like, yeah. First John chapter five and verse three, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. So we have grace uh, through the appropriation by Hamashiach Yahushai, but we're not, we're not to use that as a cloak of maliciousness. And which is why, you know, this, this goddamn devil, he's trying to, uh, uh, um, defile the uh, children of Israel, uh, as it is written in the book of Daniel, he's going to wear out the saints of the Most High God, uh, change the times and seasons, so we, we won't be able to keep the Sabbath. And um, he thinks that uh, because we're, we, we're not able to keep certain laws, that he, that's going to uh, make us unclean. But he doesn't, this man is, he's, he's a carnal man, which is why his mark is carnal. And he can't take away the spiritual mark that is upon the elect, as as it is written. This is the the the, the why, because ultimately, uh, when you're in this truth, if you're of the elect, whether you die in this truth, or you you live to see the the coming of the Son of Man, and endure unto the end, you're justified through the Spirit, and uh, ultimately. These are these are those that uh, uh, that will have the victory through the word to be to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So this is First John, chapter four and verse four. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. That starts with this word, and ultimately 
uh, when you grow in this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, you have greater the greater he, he is in you that is in the world, because this world is in utter darkness. But he that is in you, that's the Holy Spirit, which gives you the uh, the uh, the understanding and uh, guides your steps in this in this thing. And um, First John chapter four and five. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Verse 6, we are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us, which is the elect, starting with 144,000, that are singing this new song. To uh, feed the people, to help them grow in this thing, this is that spiritual temple that we're building up. And that the why that the elect have, starting with 144,000, the large multitude, that cannot be taken away nor defiled, whether in life or death. You see, this is why this man has to, uh, uh, the Edomites, they have to come with this, with the, with their mark, which is a, a, an actual mark, a, a, a chip. So they have to come up with that because they think that's, that's, uh, that, that, all the nation of Israel is going to fall for it. But we've been given, our eyes have been illuminated with the understanding of what this man's plans will be. So again, some some will not love, love their lives unto the death, but there will be a great deliverance of the nation of Israel, of the elect, those who have faith, those who have works, those who have this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, know not to take the uh, RFID chip. First John chapter 4 and verse 6. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby we know, know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So how do we know that? Because we know the, the uh, prophecies. We know the counsels of the wicked. Which is uh, was prophesied and the visions were given unto the prophets of old and now they are being expounded unto us starting with the elders and apostles of the great millstone and uh we learn from them so what we're doing we're continuing uh in their works as it is written in the book of john you know others had labored and you are entered into their labors and and uh, we're entered into the labors of those that came before us during the time of the Romans, they left their 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 labors unto us, and now we're continuing building this the, the third temple, which is a spiritual temple, which is compromising of a uh, of, uh, of various stones. We're building stone upon stone spiritually, like it is written in Book of Malachi, Book of Remembrance was written before them. That that spake often one unto another. We're doing how by doing the sit downs, by going out in the highways and byways. Expounding on doctrine, showing the things that we learn, building stone upon stone upon stone. The foundation is Hamashiach Yahushai and the prophets. First John chapter, well, that's it for that. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 111 and uh, verse 10. Psalms 111 and 10. And it reads, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, a good understanding of all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. So you have a good understanding by first keeping the commandments so that wisdom can dwell with you, which is ultimately the uh, the Holy Spirit, the Rakakudash. And uh, wisdom will not dwell in a defiled temple, as it is written in the, uh, I believe that's Wisdom of Solomon. This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2. And um, might be chapter 1. Wisdom of Solomon, 1 and 4. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter, nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin. So keeping the commandments... And uh, 
you're you're purging yourself of the of your of the of your works of sin putting on the new man putting off the old man not being subject to the sin so you can get that understanding you grow in this thing this is what this is about keeping the law having faith as well as praying and and watch watching as well as praying this is the book of psalms 32 and 8 and i bring this out a lot at camp Psalms 32, and um, we'll start at verse 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, my iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Salah. If it is about praying, acknowledging your sins, being, being to, renewed in the spirit of your mind, not continuing in sin. Sin is what? The transgression of the law. 1 John 3 and 4. And um, you read about that if you if you study the law. Uh, Hawadah, which is uh, means praise. It also means to confess. So as you're praising Yahweh Shem Shai with your hands to the east, praying to Jerusalem in the name of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, you, you're not only praising the Most High God, but you're confessing your sins unto him. Psalms 32 and 6. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee. In a time when thou mayest be found, surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Verse 37. Verse 30, Psalms 32 and 7. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Your hiding place is what? In the scriptures. As it is written, Hamashiach Yahweh he said that he would send another comforter. That is what the Holy Scriptures. Why we're comforted and knowing the things that will come to pass. Knowing that salvation is of the Jews, which are the Israelites. Psalms 32 and 7. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Salah. Verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. So this is about being instructed, starting with the law, the, the, the which is the Torah, and as well as the prophets, which show you the oracles of the uh, future events that were envisioned and, and expounded on by the prophets. And now they are being made manifest in the latter, in the latter days. Psalms 32 and 9, be not as a horse or as a mule, which have no understanding. Two-thirds of our people, they have no understanding. They're like animals. They just walk after their own lust, their belly, their, their, their desire. Scriptures speak about the desire of the eyes and, and, and these things are not profitable because they, they all lead unto death. Psalms 32 and 9, whose mouth must be held in with bit and brittle lest they come near unto thee. Now let's get that real quick. It's in the uh, first John, I believe it's chapter three. Salah here. I didn't uh, plan to bring this out, but this is actually good. Might be chapter four.
1 John chapter 2 and uh, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, pridefulness, and two-thirds of our people are proud as hell. They don't see the times that we're in. They don't see that these prophecies will come to pass. Thus saith the Holy Bible. 1 John 2 and 17, And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. So this world passing away. The air is dirty. The uh, people are disgusting. People are vile. And, 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 and this world is done. You know, the, the, the animals languishing. The people are languishing. There has to be a change. 1 John 2 and 17, And the world passeth away. The lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever, because ultimately the elect will abide forever, whether in life or in death. Why? Because, as it is written, those who uh, uh, who die uh, in, for this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding will be have first place in the resurrection. And we believe that by faith. Faith is a substance of uh, things not seen. Surely paraphrase, but that is our hope in the heavens. Now, two thirds of our people, they think that's they 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 count that as madness, foolishness. Now, you read about that in the uh, book of First Corinthians. You know, our preaching is foolishness to those who are not of this, who are of this world. Salafia. This is. Uh, Actually, I can just pull that up. Salakia. Yeah. First Corinthians, chapter two, and um, might be verse chapter one. First Corinthians 1 and 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Verse 21, for after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, meaning back then this was written uh, speaking about the Jews that knew that they were Israelites. And they required, they were asking Hamashiach, Yahushai, for signs. Hamashiach, Yahushai said, there will be no sign given unto you but the sign of, of uh, Jonas. Well, Jonas was preaching destruction. And we're in that generation Uh. uh that's that sign being given unto our people, the sign of Jonas, meaning someone had to be sent to speak these things, the judgments and uh, uh, the prophecies written therein. First Corinthians 1 and 21, for after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It, pre it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. To save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom. Wisdom. And and our people are, are caught up in all these they're caught up in all these all these philosophies. You know, they're seeking wisdom in that when that's nothing but that uh, uh deception. The scriptures speak about the wisdom, the counselor, the counsel of sinners is not prudence, it's deception. So they're being deceived, two-thirds of our people. Some of our people require a sign. Even people that are in these camps, you know, asking, you know, they, they, they want to see chariots. They want, we, we don't need that. We have faith. And we believe 
We don't need to see any signs. We don't need uh, 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 to see things in the skies like like back then. Like the Jews were requiring of Hamashiach Yahushai to give him a sign. You know, our people, our people want to see the glory. It's not, it's not for this time. This is for the 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 next the next uh the next world. We're supposed to follow. We the the, the scriptures speak about the simplicity in Hamashiach Yahushai, which is what receiving this word, growing, watching as well as praying, and 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 um and and following ultimately what what is spoken in the word. But we preach about Shiite crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, because you have these other camps. They're they they think they think fringes. Uh, that that's that's their justification. They think keeping the law is their justification, and unto the Greeks foolishness. Two thirds of our people they're they're caught up in all these crazy philosophies, uh, uh, uh Catholicism, Christianity. All these, all these uh, uh, philosophies, commandments of men, uh, men worshiping, you know, it's all, they're going to die. The Most High is going to cut them off. Why? Because they they did not believe in the name of the Son of Man, Hamashiach Yahushai, the things that are written for their understanding. Ultimately, it's going to lead uh, uh, for them the, the scriptures speak about sin being, um, uh, being the, leading you to the ways of death, and um, so I was gonna get a, another precept, but um, but I forgot which one I was gonna bring out. So we can move on to, um, this is the, uh, Psalms 19 and 7. This is the book of Psalms chapter 19 and verse 7. So, you, you know, you gotta, you gotta strike it while it's hot. You know, if you, if you got the spirit on you to make a video, you gotta make it and, uh, Lord willing, you know, it, Somebody, someone gets edified. Psalms 19 and 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So the law is perfect. Uh, Hamashiach Yahushai spoke about uh, uh, the, the scriptures cannot be broken. Why? Because these words are true. This wisdom is real and applicable. And, uh, and, and and these things are are uh, to convert your your spirit. Yahushua Mashiach, he spoke that is he spoke about these words having spirit and having life. Because everything of this world is anti life. This is this is why this is called the law of life. And um. Baruch 4 and 1. And, um, Baruch 4 and 1. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. The law is forever. All they keep it shall come to life. This is the law of life, the light. Psalms 19 and 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony, testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. What is the testimony? The testimony of the prophets. The law is perfect. There are things that, that show you that are that are righteous in the eyes of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. You have a dietary law. You have a law concerning idolatry. You have a law concerning uh, judgment. You have a law concerning... Uh, Establishing order. 
Psalms 19 and 8, the, law, the statues of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. So we're comforted in knowing that these prophecies will come to pass and that we will be saved by the Yahweh Mashiach when he returns with the chariots. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. This is that eyes I have spoken of in the book of Revelation. To see these things and um, to understand that they, they were written throughout the whole world, that they are sure. And, uh, and, um, and the, the things that, 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 that they were spoken of old are coming to pass. So it says, Psalms 19 and 8, the statues of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true, and righteous altogether. So his judgments are true and will be made manifest as it is written in the um, book of Revelation. Now, let me see if I can get that real quick. What's that? Um, I was going to get another precept too, which was in, um, what is it? Uh, Revelation. Let's see. Revelation chapter um, 15 and verse 4. This is Revelation 15 and 4. And um, Revelation 15 and 4. Who shall not fear thee, O Yahweh? Ba'ashim Yahushai. Glorify thy name, for thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest, especially uh, now more than ever. Psalms 19 and 7, we'll go down to verse 9. Psalms 19 and 9, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true, righteous altogether. Verse 11, moreover by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is a great reward. What is the reward? The kingdom. What is uh, uh, the warning? The warning has been given, spoken of uh, by the holy prophets of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai since the days of old, and now they're being made manifest. This is Psalms 23 and 5. Psalms 23 and 5. Thou preparest, verse 4. Yeah, though I walk. Uh, we'll start at uh, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. What is the green what is the green pastures, the still waters? This word. He restored my soul. He leadeth me into the path of righteousness for his name's sake. How is that done? Via the Holy Spirit. Kakwadash. Psalms twenty three and four. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. We are in the valley of the shadow of death. This is that same valley that Ezekiel saw in, 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 in his vision. The valley of dry bones. It was an open valley. You read about that in the book of, uh, uh, in the next chapter, Ezekiel 38. It speaks about the unwalled village, the land of unwalled villages. Because these, these various states, areas are, are unwalled, open space. This is the valley of the shadow of death. 
Psalms 23 and 5, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest me, my head with oil, my cup runneth over. The table that is prepared before the, uh, the, the enemies is what? This knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. The videos, the, 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 the breakdowns, the uh, starting with the Oz and Pastor's Great Millstone, out on how we in the byways, feeding us with 100% truth. Not unlike these other camps, they're not warning you about the RFID chip. They're not telling our people that great, great death, great famine is coming. And um, so this is that table, the 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 oil that uh, that you can line that up with Matthew twenty five, the five wise virgins. They have received the oil and 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 they did not diminish it. So you're not diminishing it by growing, being steadfast. As it is written, he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 5. Now I have more precepts on the, uh, the, the law cannot save you. And what I did first was touch on the points where how expe in 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 which ways is the law is the law um, profitable? Now towards the end, I'm gonna go over uh, some of the precepts that touch on how the law cannot save you. What was the purpose of the law? But I'm also gonna touch on, like I said, the uh, crown of life. And Apostle Paul, he spoke about uh, receiving a crown of life. Which in the latter days, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai would give unto his elect, starting with the uh, 144,000 and the great multitude, which is overall the house of David that is being built up again, that third temple, which is a spiritual temple. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and um, verse 5 But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. And um, so you got to make the full proof of this ministry, especially if you're a teacher. You got to study the law. You got to know the law down to the letter. Now, we know we can't keep the law perfectly, but you you there's there's things in the law that that are that that it was written for our understanding you have examples you have accounts that were written you have prophecies in the law so you have to know the law can we keep it perfectly no we can't are we saved by faith yes we are does faith and works go together yes it does this is about faith and works and being steadfast Second Timothy 4 and 5. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Verse 6. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. So you got you to gotta keep in mind. This was when Paul was was uh was finishing his uh his ministry. But if you read in verse eight, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. That is when Hamashiach Yahweh Shai uh now he, he could actually give us physical crowns, but this is talking about giving the spiritual power. The crown of life that's spoken of in the book of Revelation. We'll go over that too. To to be this is this is talking about being perfected. As Hamashiach Yahushai was. Now, are we gonna have the power of Hamashiach Yahushai? No. Because he received power uh 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 that his father gave him to be on his right hand side. Now we're going to be under Hamashiach Yahushai. 
uh, in the kingdom. But we're going to have spiritual power. The scriptures speak about uh, the house of David being as God, being as a uh, as a as a Allah Hayyim, the angels. Now we are angels trapped in, in in physical bodies. We're under spiritual chains, which is the, 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 the these vile bodies. We are princes in exile. The nation of Israel as a whole is in exile. You read about that in the book of Peter. But the point is that um, the Apostle Paul, he, he saw these things. He envisioned uh, the crown of life being given unto him, whether it was given to him in a vision, whether uh, he had read it from the uh, scriptures, from the prophet Ezra. Now we prophesy in part, we know in part, but he wrote it because these are things that he envisioned. We are visionaries, so we're supposed to, this is why we're building stone upon stone. We're expounding, we're bringing out the precepts and, and um, to expound on doctrine. 2 Timothy 4 and 8, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. When Hamashiach Yahushai returns to judge two-thirds of our people, to cut down you goddamn heathens with lasers, and not to me only, but unto them also that love his appearing. 2 Edges chapter 2 and verse 11. Second address two and eleven. Their glory also will I take unto me, and give these the everlasting tabernacles, tabernacles which I had prepared for them. So this is talking about the elect being changed in the, in the uh, at the last trump, at the in the blink of an eye. Caught up into the heavens, then descending as at New Jerusalem, which is a people, which was a people before it was a place. Second Edges, so Second Edges 2 and 11, the everlasting tabernacles, Sikari, what is that? That is the planets, kings of the universe. You read about that in Book of John, chapter 14. Now let's get that real quick. This is the uh, book of John, chapter 14 and verse 1. John 14 and 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. The everlasting tabernacles, which is dominion on earth and in, the, in, these, in, the, in the heavens. The planets. John 14 and 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am you may also be. On earth as it is in heaven. Like the uh, Lord's Prayer says. Thy kingdom come, your will be done. And in earth as it is in heaven. Second Edges chapter two, verse verse twelve. Second Edges two and twelve. They shall have the tree of life for an ointment of sweet savior. Savor. They shall neither labor nor be weary. Why? Because we're going to have that crown of life, which is a spiritual power, being perfected, changing the blink of an eye. Go and you shall receive. Pray for a few days unto you that you, they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. So this says uh, exactly how Mashiach Yahweh said. Pray and watch. Watch as well as pray. And the days are being shortened for the elect's sake. Second Edges 2 and 14. Take heaven and earth to witness for I have broken the evil in pieces and created the good for I live, saith the Lord. And um, second address. Well, that's it for that.
Second Edge was 2 and 34. Therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen, that hear and understand, look for your shepherd, he shall give you everlasting rest, for he is nigh at hand, that shall come in the end of the world. Esau is the end of the world, Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Who is the shepherd? Mashiach Yahushai. How is, how is he going to give you everlasting rest? To the elect. Give him that, that uh, iron rod to break down the nation, to beat down the nations. They got to be taught all over again. That crown of life, the spiritual power. Who are the heathen? The Israelites as a whole. Because we fell all into a Gentile state of mind. We all became strangers unto the covenants. A stranger in the Hebrew is uh, gar or gawar, meaning to, uh, to turn aside from the way. We all turned aside from the way. As a whole, we became strangers unto the covenants and promises. Second address 2 and 35, be ready to the reward of the kingdom. For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. That starts with this word, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Verse 36, flee the shadow of this world. Receive the joyfulness of your glory. I testify of my Savior openly. And like I said, we're in the spiritual darkness right now. This this world is under a uh, 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 great darkness. Get Let's get Isaiah 62 and... Uh, Actually, it might be 65. So I'll get it. Isaiah 60 and 2. Start at verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen up upon thee. That's talking about his elect. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and the gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Which is his elect. Uh, their light shall be seen upon them. Starting with the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. About uh, the law and the prophets. And and um, you read about the book Isaiah. 19 and um, Isaiah 19 and 14 The Lord have mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof and have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit so the most high God has mingled a perverse spirit in these goddamn devils and cause their uh, work to go there. He's dividing uh, uh, Satan against Satan. And if Satan to be get divided against Satan, their kingdom will not stand. And Isaiah 19 and 15, Neither shall be any work for Egypt, which the head of the tail, branch of rush, may do. Now, that's 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 the uh, upcoming uh, lack of water, lack of bread, the famine, which is coming. Because this damn this this uh this devil knows that he has but a short time, so he has to uh uh set set it set up a a the downfall of his of his system, his monetary system, so he can establish his digital currency, which is RFID chip. But as as the last of these prophecies come to pass, Revelation thirteen sixteen, the mark of the beast, the RFID chip, and World War three, which is Armageddon. Most High God is going to send His only begotten Son, Hamashiach Yahweh to deliver His elect. Isaiah 19 and 1, the burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud, and shall come into Egypt, Hamashiach Yahweh the chariots. And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at His presence. The heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst thereof. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. They shall fight every one against his brother, and every one against his neighbor. City against city, kingdom against kingdom. 
and the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof. They shall seek unto the idols, to the charmers, to them that have familiar spirits, to the wizards. And this, this is how we know the Bible is true. Because these things are coming to pass. Second address, chapter two. Slack in. Second address two and thirty-four. Second address two and thirty-seven. O receive the gift that is given you, and be glad, giving thanks unto him that it called you to the heavenly kingdom. The gift is what? This talent. You have to uh, uh, grow in this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Put your money to the exchanges. Increase the, the, the talent. So when Hamashiach Yahushua returns, he, you can give him the talents the, that you that you multiplied so that he may, he may give you a, a, a rulership over many cities, as it is written. Second Edges 2 and 38, Arise and stand. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord. Starting with 144,000 that have that new song, which are departed from the shadow of the world and have received glorious garments of the Lord. The shadow of this world, which is, which is fading away very fast. Second Edges 2 and 40, Take thy number, O Zion, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. Fulfilling the law is having faith, keeping the commandments, doing the things that were commanded to speak and warn our people. Verse 41, the number of thy children who thou longest for is fulfilled. Beseech the power of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, that thy people which have been called from the beginning may be hallowed. Because ultimately the elect, the 144,000, were with Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. These are the spirits of the righteous, the, the, uh, of the Allah Hayim. The angels that were that were that were with him in the beginning. Second Ezra's two and forty-two. I Ezra's saw upon the Mount Sion a great people, whom I could not number. They all praised the Lord with songs. He's talking about the great multitude. In the midst of them there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest, and upon every one of their heads he set crowns was more exalted which i marveled at marveled at greatly now the lord can actually put actual crowns on our heads but this is mainly speaking about spiritual power the crown of life so i asked the angel and said sir what are these he answered and said unto me these be they that have put off the mortal clothing put on the immortal and have confessed the name of god now are they crowned and receive palms. Then said I to the angel, What young person is this? Is it that crown of them and give that palm in their hands? He answered and said unto me, It is the Son of God whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stu stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. So this, these are the things that, that Paul envisioned. He saw these things and we see it. Why? Because our eyes have been illuminated. We know these things will come to pass. So this is the part, this is that crown of life. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 14. Wisdom of Solomon, 5 and 14. For the hope of the ungodly is like the dust that is blown away with the wind, like a thin froth that is driven away with the storm, like as a smoke which is dispersed here and there, with a tempest and passeth away as the remembrance of a guest that tarrieth but a day. So the hope of the ungodly is like dust. It's going to be blown away uh, with the wind, uh, with with the storm. The storm is what? The tempest of Yahweh Yahab, Shemuel Shai. The tempest is what? Uh, 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 the plagues, the, the famines. This is that tempest that comes before Yahweh Shemuel Shai, before his coming. Great division. Part, that's part of that perfect storm to bring the deliverance, which is the last of these prophecies. 
For that is the hope that the ungodly is to be blown away like dust. Two-thirds of our people, you are the nations, the Edomites, finished. But the righteous live forevermore. The reward is also with the Lord, and the care of them is with the Most High. So actually, let me see if I can get that real quick. I believe that was Psalms chapter 24. It speaks about a tempest. This is Psalms chapter 50. And uh, verse 1. Psalms 50 of 1. The Lord, the mighty God, even Yahweh, have spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun to the going down the rough. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A foul, a fire shall devour before him. And it, and it shall be uh, very tempestuous round about him. So before him, there's a, there's a fire, which is a, a, a storm, a tempest. Mashiach Yahushai said, um, um, the fire, if it already be, be kindled. What would I if it already be kindled? Because it started with this word. And now it's being made manifest in these latter days. Through what? Through the prophecies. Pestilence, which is what? Famine. Uh, confusion in many places. Division. Uh, uh, Man-made famines. Man-made pestilence. All these are the works of Yahweh Shemi Shai. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 15. But the righteous live forevermore. The reward also is with the Lord. And the care of them is with the Most High. So the righteous are going to live forevermore, which are the elect, starting with 144,000. Why? Because the scriptures speak about those that have been beheaded for the witness of Hamashiach Yahushai, which some of us will, will die in this, for this truth. But what does the scripture say? We have first place in resurrection. That is our hope in the heavens. To live forevermore, eternal life. These other nations do not have no part in this. Which is why you read in the book of Psalms, chapter 2, that they, they, they make a, a great tumult. Why? Because they know the, these 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 other nations, they know they're finished. The Edomites, they know, they know, they know their 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 time is up. Psalms chapter 2 and um, verse 1. Why do the heathen rage? The people imagine a vain thing. So they're imagining, they're, they're imagining vanity. You know, these other superpowers, they think they're going to have the next rulership. You know, these other nations are, 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 are drunk off the uh, philosophies of this goddamn devil. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 15. 16. Therefore shall they receive a glorious kingdom, the saints. This is for the uh, nation of Yasserala. So-called black, Hispanic, Native Americans. And a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand. With his right hand shall he cover them. With his arm shall he protect them. He shall take to him his jealousy for complete armor. What is that beautiful crown? The law, statute, of commandments, and the earmore parts. Being perfected, given spiritual power, super men and super women. Because the whole nation of Israel is going to receive spiritual power. But the elect are going to have a, a, a special uh, uh, portion. 
Verse 17, you shall take to him his jealousy for complete armor and make the creature his weapon for the revenge of his enemies. How is that going to be done? You read that in the book Isaiah 51 and 20. To set order back on the earth, to gather the nobles, put them in chains, put yokes upon their neck, do as they did unto us. Judai brothers, the so-called African Americans, the Native Americans, the, the, the Hispanics. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 18. You shall put on righteousness as a breastplate and true judgment instead of a helmet. Now we're going to be that, um, we're going to be made that creature his weapon for the revenge of the enemies. Now we're going to just go around uh, thrashing uh, heathens and, and destroying them. No, they're going to have to go into hardcore slavery. Now if they go off, yeah, we're going to beat them with the rod of iron. We're going to be strict on these goddamn devils. Now, are they going to keep the Sabbath? they got to keep the Sabbath. They're going to have to take, keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Keep the law. All this is going to be done in order. Righteousness. Jeremiah 51 and 20. I believe I brought this out in the last video. But just so you uh, get the idea of how this is all going to play out. Jeremiah 51 and 20. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. That's, with, that's, that's coming with the spiritual power, the crown of life. Scriptures speak about sending for many fishers. Which is why we're out on the highways and byways, starting with the elders and apostles of Great Mill Stone, to give this truth to those that hear and those that forbear of the nation of Israel. Those who don't receive it will ultimately take the RFID chip, will be burnt up, and 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 um uh, and be caught up in the lake of fire. So we're fishing the elect through this word. It's not of us. It's of Yahweh Hashem El Shai. And all praises to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai for bringing us in this truth. Jeremiah 16 and 16. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain, from every hill, and out of the holes of the rocks. So we're going to hunt who? The heathens that are left throughout world, after World War III. Because this place is going to turn, be turned into a perpetual desert. But the nations that are throughout the whole earth, uh, we're going to grab them up, put yokes of iron upon their necks, and put them in, in uh, hardcore slavery. This is the book of Psalms, chapter uh, 149, verse 8. Psalms 149 and 8. Start at uh, verse 6. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. And a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen, punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. So we we, we don't want you 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 eat my peons. We don't want you other you you we want the nobles. We want the the uh the 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 heads of these nations and their 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 respective uh families. To bind them with actual with fetters of iron to execute judgment upon them. This is a uh, uh, read about that in uh, the book of Isaiah. This is the book of Isaiah.
Isaiah 24 and verse 20. Isaiah 24 and 20. The earth shall reel to, to and fro like a drunkard, it shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. That's through what? Through the ICB of missiles, World War Three, Armageddon. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the hosts of the high ones that are on high, and the kings of the earth upon the earth. They shall be gathered as prisoners are gathered in the pit, and shall be shut up in prison. And after many days shall they be visited. So we're going to go around. The many hunters are going to go around, gather these heathens, put them in pits. After many days, they're going to be brought out, judged, put in chains. And set up the, uh, the kingdom of heaven. Because a lot of these elites are going to... Uh, Hide themselves in the uh, caves, underground bunkers. These are those that we're going to take out of those pits. Let's see if I can get there real quick. This is Revelation. Chapter 6 and verse 14. Revelation 6 and 14. Now this is the same thing you read about in the uh, book of Isaiah. Precept I just brought out. I believe that was um, Isaiah chapter 20. And um, Isaiah 20. And uh, it's lucky, not Isaiah 20. Isaiah 24 and 20, and on down. Revelation 6 and um, 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll, when it was rolled together, and every mountain and island uh, were moved out of their places. So the same thing you read about in Isaiah 24 and 20. The earth reeling to and fro from the great destruction, World War Three, the chariots, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, the chief captains, the mighty men, every bond man, every free man, hid themselves in the dens, and the rocks, and the mountains, and said unto the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, from the wrath of the Lamb. Which is why we're going to take them out of their, their bunkers, their chains, and, and put them in chains, and so on and so forth. You can also read about that in the uh, Prophets. The, uh, wasn't going to get this precept, but uh, just for edification's sake. Amos chapter 9 and um, Amos 9 and 2 though they dig into hell then shall my hand take them though they climb up to heaven thence will I bring them down though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel I will search and take them out thence though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea thence will I command the serpent and he shall bite them this is talking about first the nation of Israel, but these are, this applies to the heathens in the last days, that um, which is Armageddon, and after Armageddon, which is World War Three. Now let's go back to the um, the precept. We'll go to the uh, book of. Uh, Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 19 Habakkuk 3 and 19 The Lord is my strength The Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet hinds feet he will make me walk upon my high places He's talking about spiritual power 
to the chief singer on my string instruments. Ba'ashim Mashiach Yahweh Shai. This is Book of John, chapter 6, verse 45. John 6 and 45. As it is, writ it is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard, and hath learned of the Father, cometh unto me. They shall all be taught of Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. That's being done through what? Through the ministry of the prophets. It says in the book of uh, Romans, how shall they know if they, unless they have a preacher? John chapter 5, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, have ever asked in life, shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life, so the elect will receive the words of life. They will not come into condemnation. Although this goddamn devil, which is also known the accuser of our brethren, he's going to attempt to defile the elect, change laws and times, wear out the saints of the Most High God. But we are justified by the blood of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai and the words of his testimony. And some of us will not allow, allow our lives unto the, unto the death. But ultimately, there's going to be a great deliverance, a great multitude of the nation of Israel that will be delivered out of America, Babylon, the great. Because the Most High God is not going to let this goddamn devil uh, to fulfill his whole counsel that he has purpose to do in these latter days. Verily, I verily, I say unto you that the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. And they that shall hear shall live, which is the elect. And um, John 25 and 28, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice, because as a whole, we all fell away from our uh, from the law, statutes, and commandments, knowing we are Israelites. But like it, was, like it was written in the Valley of the Dry Bones, Ezekiel chapter 37, uh, some of them had, had life, had the sinews, but they had, they had not the breath of life. So two-thirds of our people, they heard this truth, but they did not uh, continue in it. They did not accept it. So they had some, they knew they were Israelites, but that's not the end-all be-all. They were not steadfast. They did not have the breath of life, which is the, the growing and the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Being steadfast. John 5 and 29, it shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of evil. Salakia, and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, which is the elect. Those that grow in this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Because two-thirds of our people heard about this truth. They know they are Israelites. They're not taking heed to the prophecies. And they, they, they came back they, to their, to their uh, they heard that they were Israelites. And, and they were, uh, this, is, this isn't talking about an actual resurrection. It's talking about a spiritual resurrection. And they, they heard about it. But they, they, they went after their own ways. And that is for their damnation. Because ultimately they're going to take the RFID chip and then uh, the ICBM missiles will hit and the elect will be delivered out for committing their works to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So there's a resurrection of life and a resurrection of damnation. But this truth has to be spoken throughout the whole world and then the end will come. Because the whole nation of Israel has to hear this truth. John chapter 4, verse 38. I send you to reap that wherein you bestowed nor labor. Other men have labored, and you are entered into their labors. So we entered into the labors of the elders and apostles of the great millstone to endure unto the end, commit our works unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, as it is written, to put the whole armor of God, which is what's spoken in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5. We're going to go back to that. Before we go to Ephesians 6 and 11, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, and um, 
because this is about the words of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. This isn't about what we think. This is about the prophecies that will come to pass. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, and verse 15. But the righteous live forevermore. The reward also is with the Lord, and the care of them is with the Most High. Verse 18. You shall put on righteousness as a breastplate. The law is righteous. The righteousness is things that please the Heavenly Father, which is keeping the law, following the things that He commanded, the dietary law, growing a beard, keeping the commandments, not suffering sin upon your people, doing what was commanded, and true judgment instead of a helmet. True judgment is not sparing none of our people, speaking the words of prophecy, which is ultimately the end all be all. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 19. He shall take holiness for an invisible shield. Holiness, uh, Kodash in the Hebrew is to be set apart. Not being of this world. Verse 20. His severe wrath shall be sharpened for a sword. And the world shall fight with him against the unwise. Now that's going to something else, but... This is going to bring me to uh, Hebrews 6 and 11. Salaki Ephesians 6 and 11. Because like I said, this is not of us. This is about the uh, inspiration given by the Holy Spirit of Kakwadash to speak these words, to build stone upon stone for the building, uh, uh, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. As it is written in... Um, Ephesians 4 and 11, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. No, so we're here to edify the body, to expound on doctrine, build stone upon stone. Uh, verse 13 so we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, into a perfect man. To the measure and stature of the fullness of Hamashiach. How do we come into the unity of the faith? By calling out these other camps. IUIC, Sikari, Watchmen for Israel, uh, uh, ISUPK. They're not warning our people. They're going off. You know, Sikari is saying that, that the Hebrews is not the word of God. You know, uh, uh, Watchmen for Israel. They're saying if you, if you have your fringes on when the Lord comes back, you're going to be destroyed. Which is false. Telling you the mark of the beast is not an actual mark, which is false. It is. IUIC, they're not calling on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. They're calling on uh, Sweet Jesus, which is uh, 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 going off. They're going off. ISUPK, they're telling you uh, to take the vaccination. They're going off, and they're going to be destroyed for that. Thus say the Holy Bible. Uh, Ephesians 4 and 14 that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive so this is calling out these other camps making videos on it so that our people are not deceived till we all come into the unity perfection of the knowledge wisdom and understanding of the holy bible This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 2 and verse 10. Or Salakia, let me get Ephesians 6 and 11. By Hashem Mashiach Yahushai. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The whole armor is, is faith, works. Keeping the commandments, believing in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, um, seeking the prophecies that ha that have been revealed, at, uh, starting with the others and Apostle Great Mill Stone, the breakdowns, the the, the uh, wisdom of, of how to move in these latter days. Ephesians six and twelve: For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
Wherefore, take heed, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all to stand. The whole armor is, is, is the volume of the book, eating the whole roll, the bitter as well as the, as well as the sweet. Having done all to stand, making full proof of the ministry, those that are teachers, those that are that are growing in this thing, making full proof. The scriptures speak about um, um, working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Ephesians 6 and 14, stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. So you got you got to know the whole truth, 100% truth, which is why we continue in doctrine of the others and apostles of Great Stone here at here at um uh Hero Israel at this channel that 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 where where the videos are being published. Ephesians 6 and 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, shield of faith, wherein you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. This is about faith also, and being uh, uh, built up in your faith, so that you may be renewed. That's you can only do that via the Holy Spirit, Kakwadash. Ephesians six and seventeen, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. This is about the words of Yahweh Bashem Shai. It's not about what we think. It is about doing what was commanded. We die for this truth. Okay, so what? We did what was commanded. We are profitable servants. This is about the Most High God. It's not about men. It's not about men worshiping. This isn't about uh, worship. Uh, um, causing your elders causing you to go off. This is about not showing favor to none. As the law says, not to rest judgment. And um, let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 2 and verse 10. This is Hebrews 2 and 10. For it became him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, and bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Who is the captain of our salvation? Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, because we've been sanctified by Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Hamashiach Yahweh Shai comes in the volume of the book. We receive the, uh, uh, the, the Holy Spirit uh, by making appropriations in the name of Hamashiach Yahweh Shai to the Father to, to, to be enlightened in our understanding and for us to be able to declare his name or to our people, mainly the elect, Hebrews 2 and 12, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 7. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. So Mashiach Yahweh Shai was made a little lower than the angels, meaning he came in the flesh. There are certain command, there are certain things that he had uh, spoke unto the nation of Israel, confirming the promises to the Jews back then calling the lost sheep of the house of Israel and speaking on these prophecies that we're speaking on today, bringing out the, his words, 100% truth. Which includes the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Revelation 2 and 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, 
There you may be tried and you shall have tribulation ten days. It's talking about FEMA camps, which are coming upon America, Babylon, the great. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee, thee a crown of life, which is spiritual power and possibly actual crowns. But we know that we will get spiritual power because we believe that's what the scriptures say. Revelation 2 and 11. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death, which is the lake of fire, which is ISPM missiles coming upon America, Babylon the Great. Uh, the chariots uh, destroying this, this uh, wicked whore. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. The hour of temptation is what? The RFID chip. Keeping the word of his patience is doing the things that were commanded. Eating this role, speaking unto our people, for that edifying, to edify the body of Hamashiach, which is the body of believers of the nation of Israel. This is it, talking about the actual seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We're back in the regeneration. Thus saith the Holy Bible. So the hour of temptation is, is, is going to come upon the whole world, which is Jacob's trouble, which is the trouble of the other nations also, because all hell is going to break loose then. Revelation 3 and 11, Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. It's talking about being in this truth, holding fast to the things that you receive, being steadfast, growing, watching as well as praying, that you be accounted to see the uh, uh, coming of the Son of Man. This is Revelation chapter 3, verse 27. Salakia, so like uh, <clears throat> Revelation 3 and 21. He that over, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as also I also overcame, and I'm set down with my father in his throne. So you're gonna have an order in the new in the new kingdom. You're gonna have the Most High God. You're gonna have Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. You're gonna have King David, the 144,000, and a great multitude. So we're we're not all gonna sit in the same throne. There's gonna be order to sit with Hamashiach Yahweh Shai is to overcome, to hold his words unto the end, do what was commanded. And Abaratazab were that number, meaning um, Abba, meaning uh, that means if uh, willing, and um, Ratazab meaning if, if, it, if it's acceptable. Or uh, uh, Abba also means father. Abaratazab, the father finds this acceptable, Lord willing. And how is that going to happen to sit with Hamashiach Yahushai in this throne? Well, you're going to have the thrones of judgment of the uh, house of David. You read about that in the book of Psalms. Revelation 5 and 5. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, have prevailed to open the book, to lose the seven seals thereof. So this is uh, uh, um, Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. And um, verse 6, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, in the midst of the elders, stood the Lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. Verse um
I was talking about Amashiach, Yahweh Shai, and um, Revelation, uh, Salaki. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 4. I heard the number of them which were sealed. We sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. So you have the 144,000. Verse 9, and, I, and after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds, and people and tongues, stood before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. He's talking about the great multitude of the nation of Israel. This is the book of Psalms. Let's see if I can get that precept on the uh, the throne of David. I brought that out earlier, but just for edification's sake. Give you Psalms 23. Salakia. Yeah. Actually, I'll just pull it up right here. Salakia. This is in the book of Psalms, chapter 122. In verse 5, Psalm 122 and 5. Psalm 122 and 5. There are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. So there's going to be thrones established for the house of David, starting with the elect, 144,000. Second address, 13 and 1. This is the second address, 13 and 1. Second address, 13 and 1. And it came to pass, after seven days, I dreamed a dream by night. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea. That it moved all the ways thereof, and I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. When he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. Here's Hamashiach Yahushai coming upon America Babylon the Great with the chariots, because he's going to come upon America Babylon the Great first to deliver his elect, bring them back into the Holy Land. After they were given spiritual power. And then the other nations will come up to fight against the nation of Israel. Second Edges 13 and 5. And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. This is in the valley of Jehoshaphat, valley of Yahweh Shapat. Or you read about in the book of Revelation, Armageddon, which is uh, in the Hebrew, Har uh, Ma, Magadwan, which is Har meaning mountain, Ma meaning of, God one, God meaning troop, the one makes it plural, the, the mountain of troops. Why? Because you can have uh, these various nations that are left from World War Three. They're going to go to the uh, Middle East, the Fertile Crescent, fight Hamashiach Yahushai there, as well as the Edomites and their armies, and they're going to be utterly destroyed. Verse 
second edge was thirteen and six, but I beheld, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain, and flew upon it. The great mountain is the mother ship, Mashiach Yahushai. Ezra described it as great mountain. Why? Because it was as big as a mountain, it covered the sky. He flew upon the chariot. But I would have seen the region or place where the hill was graven, and I could not. So this is how big the chariot was. You only saw the mothership cover the sky, as well as the thousands and thousands of chariots. But this was in, in the uh, Valley of Jehoshaphat, Armageddon. Verse 8, And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him, were so afraid, were so afraid, yet starts fight. So all these uh, armies are going to gather together to fight Hamashiach Yahushai and the angels, the chariots, and um, going to be de destroyed. Second Edge was 13 and 12. After, afterward, saw I, the same man, come down from the mountain, and call unto him another peaceable multitude. This is a great multitude you read about in uh, the book of Revelation. Second Edges 13 and 29. Behold, the days come when the Most High God will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth, which is the elect. Started in America, Babylon the Great. You read about that in Isaiah 19 and 1. And as well as the remnant throughout the whole earth. Mainly it's going to happen here in America, Babylon the Great. And all. Um, Second Edges 13 and 30, and ye shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth, because this will happen as a snare unto those who are not privy on, unto these, these, uh, the, these events that are transpiring in these latter days. A lot of people are spiritually asleep. Why? Because they're drunken, like a, a drunken man is drunken in the night. How is that? How is that? Through the philosophies of this world. Second edge is 13 and 31. And one shall undertake to fight against another. One city against another. One place against another. One people against another. One realm mm. against another. So he's going to start with the famine of uh, lack of water, lack of bread. In America, Babylon, the great. As this man implements his uh, RFID chip. City against city, one house invading another, one will not show pity to his neighbor as it is written. Actually, let me see if I can get that precept real quick. Because I meant to bring that out at camp, but um, wasn't able to. So this is uh, Second Nedris. Lord willing, I can find it. This is Second Edges, chapter fifteen, verse nineteen. Second Edges fifteen and nineteen. A man will start at seventeen. Start at sixteen. Uh, verse fifteen. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. One people shall stand up to fight against another. And swords in their hands. There shall be sedition among men. Invading one another, shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Second Edges 15 and 17, a man shall desire to go into a city, and shall not be able, for because of their pride the city shall be troubled, houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Verse 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses, and with the sword spoil their goods, because of the lack of bread for great tribulation. So that's what's going to happen. Man will not pity his neighbor, and ultimately it's going to lead to utter chaos. World War III, uh, um, the RFID chip being implemented, then all hell is going to break loose, the deliverance is going to come. 
and um, the elect will be uh, uh, delivered. And I'll write to Zod, we're of that number, you know, so be it. So let's go back to Second Edris, chapter 13, verse 29. Actually, we'll, um, Second Edris 13 and 31, or verse 32, and the time shall be. When these things shall come to pass, and the signs shall happen, which I shewed thee before, then shall my son be declared, and thou sawest as a man descending. Why? Because he is going to ascend upon America, Babylon the Great, deliver his elect, give him spiritual power. They're going to be brought down to the land of Jerusalem with spiritual power, and all nations of the earth will see it. And, and then verse 33, And when all the people hear his voice, Every man shall in their own land lead the battle they have, one against another. And an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together, as thou sawest them willing to come, to overcome him by fighting. Second address, 13. And I think I brought that out already. 13 and 12. Got that already. Joel chapter 2 and verse 2. So I wasn't going to go into this. But I think it would be good for edification's sake. Touch on the uh, chain of events that will transpire. Joel 2 and 2. A day of darkness and gloominess. A day of clouds and of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people, a strong, there had not been ever to like, and there shall be any more after it, even to the years of generations. A fire devoureth before them. This is, the, the, this is how you know it's not actually talking about people. This is a parabolic for missiles. Joel 2 and 3, a fire devoureth before them. And behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them. Why? Because the all these ICBM missiles are going to come from the east. From countries like China, Russia, Iran. To come up against this great whore and to burn her up. And behind them a desolate wilderness. Um, yeah, nothing shall escape them. Verse 4, the appearance of them is that appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. It's talking about the uh, many and many uh, ICBM missiles. Like the noise of chariots on tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoured the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. Before their face the people shall be much pain, all faces shall gather blackness. How through the many destruction that the it will do upon America, Babylon, great nuclear fallout, buildings collapsing, and, and and all hell breaking loose. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march every one in his ways. They shall not break their ranks. Neither shall they one one thrust another. They shall walk in every one in his path. When they fall upon a sword, they shall not be wounded. Why? Because these they have the uh, technology guiding the missiles to come upon this great whore. And the spirit of the Most High God is going to be in those missiles. And it's going to hit this great whore, the power of 200 million uh, ICBM missiles. It's not going to be actually 200 million, but it's going to be the power, the strength of that many. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is very great. For he is strong that executeth his word. 
for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide in it? And the Lord's army is what? These various ICBM missiles, the chariots, the armies of men, because the Most High God, He has power and um, over all things. This is the book of Joel, chapter 3 and verse 9. Proclaim this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Be your plowshares into swords, your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Now these nations that were once weak, they had traded with this great whore, waxing themselves rich off of it. Built up their arsenal, their uh, um, their armories. Nations like China, Russia. Now they're saying they are strong. What are they going to do? They're going to come up against this great whore to burn her up. Thus saith the Holy Bible. Verse 11, assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen, gather yourselves together round about, thither cause our mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh, the mighty ones are what? The Elohim, the chariots. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Yahweh Shapat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Same thing you read about in the book of Second Edris. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. The day of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is near in the valley of decision. This is Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. Revelation 12 and 17. Actually, before I get that, let's get the uh, book of Revelation. So like it. Revelation 17 and verse 17. Which is why those that are weak will say that they are strong and the Most High God is going to put in their spirit to burn up this great whore. Revelation 17, 17. For God had put in their hearts to fulfill His will, to agree to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God should be fulfilled. Oh, Salakia, verse uh, 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, shall make her desolate and naked, Shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. That's right. Revelation 12 and 17. So like it. Revelation 12 and 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. So ultimately, this uh, the the Edomites they're they're gonna make war with the with the with the saints. How's that gonna be done? Like it says in Book of Second Edges, take some of them away. Some will be put in a concentration camp. Some will die for this truth. But ultimately, the Most High God is gonna deliver His elect. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. It's talking about the uh, Michael, uh, which is under Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, the angels. They're going to fight against these various armies. 
to burn them to uh, destroy them. The dragon is uh, the Edomites and their armies, and their angels are their uh, cavalries, their 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 um, their planes, their ships, weapons of war, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. First Corinthians uh, chapter eight. This is first Corinthians chapter eight and verse one. There's Salakia. Uh, like it is written the accuser of our, of our brethren which is this goddamn devil he's gonna um try to defile the nation of Israel one way or another but it's not gonna come to pass because we are um, justified by um by the blood of Amashiach Yahweh Shai Like here. This is the book of Romans, chapter 8, and verse 1. Romans 8 and 1. Now, there, therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to, to them which are in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. There's no condemnation to his elect. And the book of uh, uh, the same chapter speaks about who can lay the charge to God's elect. Why? Because they're cleansed by the blood of Hamashiach Yahweh By believing in, in the testimony, which is the volume of the book. Which is why in the book of Revelation, um, I believe that's Revelation 12. Slack it. Revelation 12 and 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out unto the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now was come salvation and strength. And the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, for accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Which is, that is why he's, he's attempting to defile the nation of Israel, because he's the accuser of our brethren. But the life will be justified uh, and delivered. Ultimately, therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. The devil knows that he has but a short time, which is why these prophecies are moving faster and faster, the days are being shortened, and the elect are justified. Revelation chapter 15 and verse 4. Actually, let's move on to Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4. Revelation 20 and 4. And I saw thrones, and set they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, which is the elect, starting with 144,000, great multitude. 144,000 being a governing body, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai, for the word of God, which have not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither I received his mark in their foreheads or in the hands, and he lived and reigned with Hamashiach a thousand years. 
but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed is holy is he that a part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Hamashiach, and shall reign with him a thousand years. These are the elect, starting with the 144,000 and a great multitude, priest of God and of Hamashiach. This is Revelation chapter 21 and verse 2. And I, John, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. This is the uh, nation of Israel, the elect. We are delivered, given spiritual power, and are brought down from the chariots to reign upon the earth. This is the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 18. So we're not justified by the law. We are justified by faith, but we uphold the law. Because why? We're walking after the Spirit. Galatians 3 and 18. For the inheritance be of the law is more of promise. It is no more of promise, but God gave it unto Abraham by promise. So ultimately, this goes back to the oath that the Most High God gave to Abraham, Isaac through, through Abraham, to Abraham, and then through Isaac, and then through Jacob. To establish the nation of Israel as a people unto himself the 12 tribes of Yashra'ala Galatians chapter 5 and verse 4 Christ has become of no effect unto you whosoever you are justified by the law you are fallen from grace so ultimately we're saved by grace which goes back unto the oath which the most high God gave to Abraham to bless the seed that would come out of the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Israelites, the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. Galatians 6 and 13. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised they may, that they may glory in your flesh. So the Jews, the rulers of the Jews back then, they were keeping the carnal ordinances of the law, fringes, offering up sacrifices, but they denied things like true justice, like uh, not suffering sin upon their people. They were hypocrites. Romans chapter 3 and uh, verse 24. Romans chapter 3 and 24. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. We're justified by grace, but we have no we have no we cannot use that grace as a cloak for sin. The like is like as it is written, the law abideth forever. Romans chapter nine and verse thirty. What shall we say then, that the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith, because this thing starts with faith, which is why these Israelite foreigners coming back into the fold back then were justified by faith. And it says in verse 31, But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, had not attained unto the law of righteousness. Because they were keeping the law, but they were going off by being hypocrites. They weren't, um, uh, they were denying, casting out these, uh, the Israelite foreigners. And they thought the law was the end all be all. But Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, he was written in the law to be raised up and, and as that prophet amongst their brethren. Deuteronomy 18. Verse 32, wherefore, because they saw it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, 
they stumbled at that stumbling stone, which was Hamashiach Yahushai. And the reason why the law was uh, introduced was for bringing in of a better hope. Read about that in, um, I believe it's chapter 4. Galatians 3 and 23, but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should be afterwards be revealed, because Hamashiach Yahushua was spoken about in the law, ultimately in the volume of the book, he was to be raised up, and that was that faith that was afterwards to be revealed, which today, we don't have the temple, so our, our spiritual sacrifice is our making our body living sacrifice. Our appropriation for sin is Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. You see, that was that faith afterwards to be revealed. The rulers of the Jews did not understand that. They were blinded because they thought the law was the end all be all, which is why they didn't some some did not believe in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. And those same men are back here today. Now, before I close up, I'm just going to read some commentary on Revelation 20 and 4. It reads, Revelation 20 and 4, speaking on the uh, millennial reign, says, And I saw thrones, and he sat. There is a prominence given to the thrones, because it is thought of the re reign of the saints is uppermost in the mind of the seer. The thrones are seen and those who sat on them, which is talking about the, the thrones of judgment of the house of David, the elect, the governing body, 144,000, starting with Hamashiach, Yahushai, King David, then the 144,000, under the nation of Israel. By whom are the thrones occupied? The answer is supplied in the latter part of the verse. Those who are in the latter part are said to reign with Hamashiach, are clearly those who sit upon the thrones, which first caught the prophet's eye. These are those that would be fed for the witness of Hamashiach, of, uh, Hamashiach Yahushai. And you have the 144,000. Now, some of them will be delivered. Some of them will die for this truth. Like I said, we prophesy in part, we know in part. These are all the real servants of God. They appear before the seer in two great classes. First, the martyrs who have been faithful unto death, for it speaks first of seeing the souls of those who have been beheaded, strictly slain with the axe. Because whether you like it, believe it or not, uh, um, this devil is going to use um, um, his, his blessing which is his sword to to put a lot of, to put uh, 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 to put some of the believers uh, to death. So it says, uh, but clearly the special class of beheaded martyrs is to be taken as rep representing all. Because of the testimony of, of Jesus and because of the word of God, the number of the martyrs is now complete. That is why you have some of the 144,000 which are in the spirit world. And you have some that are here in the flesh. You have those that are going to be beheaded in the guillotines. Some of, them are, some of us are going to have to die for this truth. Some of us will live to see the coming of the Son of Man. But ultimately, the Most High God will deliver His elect. 
These form the first class mention. Secondly, those who have been faithful in life occupy these thrones. The prophet sees these, even, even those who ever did not worship during life the wild beast, nor, bet it, nor yet his image, and did not receive the mark on their forehead upon their hand. So there are those who are not going to take the mark of the beast and get delivered before all hell breaks loose, before the destruction of America, Babylon the Great. The triumph and sovereignty, whatever they be, sovereignty, whatever they be, are shared by all the faithful. These things are stated as constituting their privileges. They live, whereas the rest of the dead live not, they reign, and judgment was given them. This last has been felt to be a difficulty. What sort of judgment is intended? The passage in Daniel is clearly suggested by present one. The phrase judgment was given is not there to be understood as meaning that that right was done them. Judicial powers are given to the saints as to those who occupy the thrones. I was talking about the house of David. Uh, the chief power in governing, which is 144,000. Those are, are teaching the new song. The, the teachers they reign they judge they live the true and full powers of life are seen to be theirs this is that reward spiritual power the kingdom and is not this the case always now after that's going into some mumbo jumbo nonsense you know Esau he likes to throw in truth with lies And I saw thrones, so this is the pulpit commentary. And I saw thrones, they sat upon them, judgment was given unto them. This describes the position of Christians in this life. They sit upon thrones, that is, they reign with Christ, judgment is given unto them. That is, by their conduct in the world, the world is judged and condemned. You know... So that's, you know, that's going off right there, which is why you have to have discernment. So it says the redeemed have made kings and reign. It says Revelation 5 and 10. So also St. Paul says we are blessed with all spiritual blessings and happy places in Hamashiach. And it says, and I saw the souls. Actually, I think I read that already. So it says, um, you Christians sit upon thrones and reign with Christ. Even those who suffer shameful deaths share this perfect safety and his exaltation. Because ultimately, you know, those who, who suffer those type of deaths, you know, these, these are the elect. You know, they're going to share that glory in, in being ministers of, 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 of God and of, of Hamashiach. Though to the eyes of the world they were so afflicted and degraded, they lived, they lived as described in verse 5 as the first resurrection. This can only be referred to that first awakening from sin to the glorious life of the gospel. So let's see what else we got right here. This is one of the benedictions of the apocalypse. The blessing of those who have part or share in the first resurrection has this definite feature. 
On these, the other hand, second death has not power, which is Lake of Fire, which is Babylon the Great being burnt up. So it's going, they're going off, they're saying it's spiritual rather than physical. When it says what it says, the scriptures is of no private interpretation as it is written. Theirs is a priesthood of life who have offered themselves a living sacrifice to God. The kingship of life is theirs. That's what we're striving for. The kingship of life. Who have overcome the world powers and the word of God and in the blood of the Lamb, of the Lamb, these truly reign. Because Yahweh Shai Mashiach, he overcame the world. He overcame death and was uh, glorified. Which is why he spoke about the servant being not above his master. So that's going off. Let's see if we can find anything else over here. So we're going to look at the etymology for blessed. So that is uh, Makarios. Blessed, happy. Makarios become long, large. Properly when God extends his benefits. Which is spiritual power. Um, Makarios, blessed, fortunate. Position for receiving God's provisions. Favor, literally extend to make long large his grace benefits this happens when receiving obeying the lord's inbirthings of faith um let's see if we can find anything else blessed happy joined to the name of god names of god um let's see if we can find anything else right here Supremely many blessed, extension fortunate. So that's going to come with the spiritual power. So look at etymology for holy, set apart by or for God, holy, sacred. Hagios, properly different, unlike other otherness, which is why the scripture speaking about not being of this world. Hagios means likeness of nature with the Lord. Which is uh, speaks about in the book of Romans chapter 8. Those who have conformed to the image of the Son. Mashiach Yahweh Shai. The fundamental core of Hagios is different. Thus a temple of the first century was Hagios. Because it was different holy from other buildings. Hagios holy has a technical meaning different from the world. The elect are different from the world. They're not of this world. They're set apart, distinguished. Properly reverend, worthy of rev veneration Of things which on account of some connection with God possess a certain distinction, claim to reverence as places sacred to God which are not to be profaned. This devil he cannot profane the elect of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Reverend worthy of veneration, as ultimately these nations will, will, uh, will, will worship the Most High God, His only begotten Son, and will bow to the, to the Israelites. The reverend us, the whole nation as a whole, because we're gonna have spiritual power. These uh, these these dogs, they're gonna they're gonna be in their flesh, and they're and vile. They're gonna be vile still, and um, that's what the scriptures say. And you gotta deal with it.
Goddamn devils. So it says, uh, which is made more sacred because made by God himself, which is the elect, that worshipful, worshipful offspring of divine power, the blessing of the gospel. That is the, ultimately the blessing, the ultimate blessing, divine power. We are the sons of God, as it is written. A person whose services God employs, for example, apostles, angels, prophets, set apart to God to be as it were exclusively be his. We are the apple of the Lord's eye. Just as the Israelites claim for themselves the title, because God selected them from the other nations to lead a life acceptable to him and rejoice in his favor and protection. You got to deal with it, you fucking devils. And, and finished. Of sacrifice offerings prepared for God with solemn rite, pure, clean, in moral sense, pure, sinless, upright, holy. These are the elect. Most holy, saint, sacred, physically pure, morally blameless, religious, ceremonially consecrated. The, the, the resurrection, which is uh, an uh, stase, and rising again, standing up again, because the nation of Israel will, 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 will rise up again to his former glory. Anas, anastasis from Anna up again, histemi to stand, literally stand up, stand again. Christ's physical resurrection is the foundation of Christianity, which also guarantees the future resurrection of all believers. That's talking about the elect, spiritual power, the crown of life. Bashim Mashiach Yahushai. Raised to life again, anistemi, resurrection, uh, moral recovery, so there is a spiritual resurrection. Raised to life again, rise from the dead, and um, Hereus, the etymology, Revelation 20 and 4 for priest, a priest. One who offers sacrifice to God. Uh, hero. He. Iriosi. Iriosi. Sacred. Because belonging to the temple. Uh, a priest. One who offers sacrifices. And in general is busied with sacred rites. Metaphorically of Christians. Because purified by the blood of Christ brought into close contact with God they devoted their life to him alone it's talking about the saints, the Israelites remember Christ a uh, Christian means a follower of Christ sacred, a sacred thing sacred, holy, set apart which are the Israelites so called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans So I think that's, uh, let's see if I got this right here. 
to be king, to exercise kingly power, to reign, uh, of the rule of Jesus the Messiah, of the reign of the Christians in the millennium. So we're going to have a... Uh, 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 the supreme moral dignity, liberty, blessedness, which will be enjoined by Christ's redeemed ones to exercise the highest influence, to control, obtain royal power, become king, became king, which are the saints of the Most High God. Bashim Mashiach So with that, give an honor and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Kakudash. Give double honors to the others and possibly bring my stone. You taught us this truth. And this is uh this lesson is called the crown of life. And uh, how we're not justified by the law. And uh, the the uh and the the war the the war of Armageddon, which is uh we went into that also and us. Uh, Again, uh, putting on the whole armor of God. Give no honor and glory to Yahweh Shai. That would say Kwame Asherala, Bad Babal, Shalom.